Hi, I'm Mark Reedy here. In this video, I'm going to do an end-to-end -end demo of Tatum's Fleet Maintenance Software version 4.6.19. And we'll start off with the menus, settings, and preferences. And then we'll move through to equipment search function. And then we'll go over the various tabs. And then we're going to check out the various forms. And then we're going to look at some of the various reports. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and log in here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and launch Tatums. Let's double click on the icon there. And if we're in uh, trial mode uh, before you've purchased, you just click continue if you still have uh, any days left. So that's what I'm going to do here. And uh, then the first screen that pops up is to ask you if you want to check for reminders. And so I'm going to say no to this, but if you wanted to check for reminders, you could say yes, and then I'll run all the queries. just takes a little longer to get into the program if you check for reminders first. So I'm going to say no. And then it tells you on the next screen you can choose to have automatic backup. So I'm click OK there. And I'm going to click on a piece of equipment in the list, and that brings up all the tabs down below that you see here. So we'll go over the menus, and up at the top we have File set up my company information and exit program and then we have edit to edit a piece of equipment and then we have records for adding a new piece of equipment or deleting a piece of equipment and we have reports all equipment reports these are for these are just quick reports for um, the entire fleet that uh, relate to the entire fleet current equipment reports is for the currently selected piece of equipment so these reports are just sort of quick reports that are uh, related to that currently selected piece of equipment. And then you have more reports, which opens up a screen where you can choose a report type and then various uh, report types. And then once you choose that, you'll have a list of reports to uh, choose. And then when you choose a report, you'll see over here on the right, it pops up with a uh, criteria that you can enter in to narrow down the range of the report that you want to look at for date ranges and so forth. Alright, so then uh, we finished with reports, now we look at forms. Under forms you've got uh, various um, types of forms that you can pop up. For example, customers, uh, drop-down list maintenance, so drop-down list maintenance for, is for all the drop-down lists like you see down here uh, throughout the program and so that allows you to uh, open up a, a little pop-up box that allow you to edit what's inside those drop-down lists and change them to uh, what you want them to be. All right, and then um, parts inventory, click on that and that just shows you the parts inventory screen. And personnel, that shows you the personnel, hazardous waste inspection log, uh, that's just a quick uh, thing for your your shop to, for your uh, waste hazardous waste um, and then reminders pop up that's that same pop-up screen that'll pop up uh, if you wanted to in the beginning when you first start the program work orders list is an entire list of work orders uh, for the entire uh, fleet and then uh, bulk odometer and hours and entry this is so you can enter in your odometer and hours readings for the entire fleet instead of just one entry at a time and for tools, you have networking, so you can link up to a central data file and I'll share it. Backup and compact data, this is so you can back up your data um, to uh, either your local computer or to an external source, like a, a flash drive or an external hard drive. Update the sort order, this is a little pop-up screen, the same as you see down here, that allows you to uh, create an, a uh, a numeric value for the piece of equipment because uh, Tatum's allows you to put numbers and letters for the equipment number so your sorting might not always be exactly as you want it because it's letters and numbers so you can assign a numeric value to your equipment so that you can sort using that sort order field if you want to. Simplify Tatum's this allows you to uh, uncheck these uh, boxes if you want to remove any of these tabs from the screen specific to your uh, computer. Um, it wouldn't be like if you're on a network and you have multiple users 
it would only be specific to that per, that specific user. Edit tab name, same thing. You can change the names of these tabs if you want to. And then we go here and look at the preferences. And the preferences uh, are the same with these preferences are similar to those other field, uh, forms where uh, you, any changes you make here are just going to be specific to the computer you're currently working on. It's not going to be company-wide or it's not going to affect the other computers that are running Tatums. Just the person that uh, sets these preferences is are specific to that particular computer. And then we're going to uh, window. This is the, we're really not going to use this. And then help. You can click on that to go over to the, uh, to the website um, and see uh, help videos. There's a quick start guide here. Uh, if you want to get to updates, you click on that. It'll bring you over to the web page for the updates. Um, if you need to be, if you're not registered and you've got Tatums open, you can click there to open the registration screen. If you need to purchase Tatums, you can click that. That'll bring you to the purchase page and about. That just brings up the little about window showing you the version and so forth. Okay, so we'll look at the uh, file setup and. The file setup is for the 90 day inspections or whatever number of days you choose. So if you go here to the, to the interval, so let's do the interval first and so it's set at 90 days. So if your particular operation or DOT requirements is say 365 like it is in a lot of uh, jurisdictions, then you would just change this to 365 and that'll change it for uh, purposes of reminders and it'll also display it differently on the tabs inside of the program. So we're going to close that and then we're going to look at the global inspection items list. So if we click on that, it comes uh, from us with a truck tractor and with trailer and if you want to, if you have other equipment types and we recommend trying to keep your categories as broad as possible, then you can copy from these list of inspection items to your new list using this copy items from other equipment type here so if you've got a list here or if you've got a I don't know if any of these are empty this one is empty so if I wanted to copy from the truck tractor to this equipment type of 6541 then I would choose copy items from other equipment and then move on from there there's other videos that show you that and then the um, global years list this is how many years it's going to generate inspections for it, what happens is when you when it creates these 90-day inspections they're pre-populated in the system for one for each month of the year for the number of years that you've got in the system all right so we're going to close that and then we're going to go over to the file and then my company information this is for your company information this will show up on most of the reports also on work orders um, as far as your you know company name address and so forth and then you have your default labor charge. This is what's defa the default labor charge in work orders. You can override that when you're in a work order. The default inventory markup method. So you can have it increase the uh, cost and the sales price if you want to by a percentage or just no increase at all if you don't want it. The sales tax, default sales tax charge, you can enter that percentage here. Um, if you're charging sales tax on labor, and this is for uh, work orders as well. If you're charging sales tax on labor, then uh, you would want to check that box. And if you're charging sales tax on your miscellaneous items as the default, then you would check that box as well. Uh, you can enter, uh, choose to have a company logo. Now the logo needs to be certain dimensions. And, and then you can uh, have that logo show up on your work orders. This link here needs to be a central link. All this information is propagated on the uh, back-end database so any Tatum's uh, workstation that connects to it will this data will all already be there if it's been entered once um, but this location of this file needs to be in a central location where everybody has the same access to it in order for it to be able to find it from the front-end file to find the uh, the image logo image all right so let's close that out and we're going to go to uh, well, this final thing on the file is just to exit the program and click on that and it exits out. If you want to edit the equipment number, for example, I had a uh, person ask me the other day, they have some tools that they're keeping track of inside Tatums and they put a sticker on the tool and the number of the sticker got rubbed off. So now they want it, they have to generate a new one So and they can't reuse the same number. So they wanted to know how to change the equipment ID number. 
So uh, just basically click on edit and then equipment I edit equipment ID and you can see that it highlights the number down at that point. This number uh, becomes editable so that you can change it and you just type in a new number and then uh, move on from there. Records, if you want to add a new record, you can click on add new record and it's going to pop up a little uh, window that will walk you through basically asking you for the equipment number you want to enter. So I'll just enter something here. Then it asks you for the type of equipment. You can choose that from the drop down and you just click OK. And then it will go ahead and create that piece of equipment. Once the equipment is created, then uh, it selects that equipment in the search bar here and it shows only that piece of equipment so that you don't accidentally click on something else and start entering information for a uh, onto a different piece of equipment that's supposed to be for the one you just entered into the system. So now you can finish filling all this out. When you're done you can just highlight this uh, numeric value over here or whatever the value is of the equipment number. Click search again and that'll bring back your entire list. And then if you want to delete a piece of equipment if it's selected like if we go down to that 999 now if I wanted to delete that I click on uh, records and then delete equipment and it asks me if I want to delete 999 click yes and 999 has been deleted. So now we we'll go over to reports. As I mentioned before, uh, I don't need to mention that again. I'll, I'll come back to reports later, come back to forms later, and we'll come back to these tools later. And so now let's just go over the equipment search function. And um, so basically you can type in an equipment number and search. You're going to click this search button to search by equipment number and you can search by various fields. So you can choose to search by, if, if you have a specific word inside of a note that you're looking for, you could search it there um, by VIN number. So you have various search criteria that you can use. You're just going to type in uh, whatever you're searching for here. For example, if I just type 28 and click search, it just shows me that piece of equipment. If I remove that out of there and click search again, it'll show me the entire list again. You have the ability to filter so that you're only showing a list of equipment based upon this filter criteria. So you could choose customer. Once I choose customer, then you can see here this choose over here populates this drop down gets chosen so that I can choose which customer I want to look at. And so that way, then I'll click search again. Now it just shows the one truck or the one piece of equipment for that particular um, customer. And if I wanted to search by a different criteria, like for example equipment type, and I wanted to look at all the truck tractors, then I could choose that or choose one of these other types here. Click search and then it's going to show me only the truck tractors, only the equipment type truck tractor. And then you can sort by um, these fields here, equipment number, sort order, and so forth. And so uh, the other, th other way to find a piece of equipment is to click on the quick find down here. If you know the equipment, you can actually use the drop down if you want to. Or if you just type it in, say 52 and press enter, it's going to highlight 52 and select it. And it brings it up so that that's the piece of equipment I'm looking at. So that's that. Now we're going to go through the various tabs. And so we have equipment summary. And this is just basically your, your general information about the equipment. Um, you're also able to update the odometer in hours from this particular screen and you can uh, choose view all to see all of the previous entries and you can sort them. Uh, one of the issues that we have seen in the past is where somebody's missed, made a missed entry there and all you got to do is click view all, find the entry and correct it or click over here and delete it. You would click on the little uh, box next to it and then you can press the delete key and you can see it'll be deleted. You could also just highlight a, a particular field here and press delete record, it'll delete it. This od od odometer and hour screen gets updated from the various tabs. So when you're uh, entering in a fuel log entry or a 90 day inspection or anything else, pretty much anything else, and you enter an odometer reading or an hours meter reading, it'll ask you if you want to update the uh, meter reading for the equipment itself. And so then this will be updated with, with that date with that meter reading uh, here on this screen without having to go into the update odometer and hours and enter it in for the equipment itself. All right, so um, so that, and then you've got a few buttons down here. We have registration and taxes. 
uh, to keep track of you know renewals and so forth for your uh, registrations, motor vehicle taxes and so forth. And they'll sh that stuff will show up on the reminder screen. Insurance, you can have that show up on the reminder screen as well. And then you can keep track of your insurance costs, your financials, basic information about the equipment, life expectancy, and so forth. Coolant testing, this is just informational. You can put in whatever your cooling test coolant testing results are currently. Uh, your oil analysis, same thing, just internet informational. And, and then miscellaneous details, this is kind of the stuff that um, will show up on, the, uh, on one of the reports called the unit information report, just showing information about the vehicle itself. Coming up in a newer version soon, we're gonna have uh, the ability to add additional items down below here uh, that you can name and create and keep track of just about anything you want. All right, so uh, you can see here, um, the current odometer and hours readings shows up right here. And then uh, down below that, it shows you your current loop service information as far as when the next one is due. And then uh, your 90 day inspection dates, that shows you when they are last done and when they're coming up again. As I said before, when you ch if you were to change that interval to 365, this label here would say 365 day inspection and so would these labels down here and this one over here as, far, as well as this tab up here. And so if, if you are uh, required, if you want to see reminders for a 90 day inspection, you want to have this checkbox checked here. All right. Driver's history. This is so that you can keep track of who is driving the equipment when. So you can double click on this and you can have a beginning and ending date for each driver. That way you can keep track of and basically you could see what the costs are when specific drivers might have been on the equipment and see any kind of trends there. Um, you could also if somebody got in a ticket or an accident or something like that, you can go back and see who was driving at that particular point in time. Okay, so let's move on to the 90-day inspection. And here is where you will, you'll see your list of 90-day inspections here in this area. And if I clicked here to add inspection, if I were to just uh, put one in there and mark everything is okay, I can close that and you can see the inspection shows up there. If I double click on it, it'll bring it back up and I could make changes to it. Uh, there's another video that goes into detail about 90 day inspections. Lube service, this is where you keep track of your lube services. You can set your lube services up or pretty much anything you want to keep track of that you need a reminder for that's based on either odometer or uh, hours meter or days. So you can click here and if I, you can see the intervals. So it could be miles or kilometers, hours or days. You just give it a name, uh, the lube service type, and then give it an interval and then uh, put in the last time it was done the, and the readings and so forth and then uh, it'll show up in the reminder screen as it's coming up due again and there's another video that goes into detail about that uh, needed maintenance and repairs this is to keep track of what's come what's what's needed to be done this tab the repairs completed and the parts for this equipment are all, all sort of legacy tabs that were created before we added work orders to the system, but we've left them in there for people that just want a quick, simple, easy way to keep track of uh, repairs and uh, need to maintenance and repairs and parts. Uh, there's uh, extra videos that goes over uh, each of these tabs in detail. It's a single video that covers these three tabs. Uh, and then we go over to uh, fuel log. This is where you can keep track of your fuel for that piece of equipment. So you basically put in uh, who the vendor is, or even if it's an in-house, you can choose the vendor there. You put in the uh, beginning odometer reading when you first start out, and then a current odometer, and you can also enter in state or province beginning and ending odometer readings. If I double click on this, you can see here we can add in the, the beginning and ending uh, state odometer or province odometer readings. And, um, and then if we go to, and there's a detailed video that goes over the fuel log as well. And so now we're going to go to uh, work orders. And with work orders, uh, you can see if we click on this tab here, we're able to uh, sort the display uh, of work orders. We can also double click to open up an existing work order and see it. And with the work orders, you can put in unlimited short descriptions. You can put in up to 65,000 characters in the detailed description. You've got labor completed uh, and parts and materials used. And you can also have attachments to a specific work order, like a scanned document. And if for uh, labor completed, you can see if I double click on this, it'll show us the labor item. This was done by an outside vendor. Uh, you can also choose to have your in-house people uh, 
uh, do the labor. So if I were to uh, click on add labor item and then I can choose an employee here and the employee has to be selected in the personnel file as a fleet technician. And you're going to just need to give a description for what the uh, labor item is. You got to make sure you've added how many units or hours that it has taken. We also have the ability to, to uh, track, excuse me, each labor item and each uh, part item uh, with a repair code. So you could have multiple repair codes on a specific work order and then uh, later on you can run reports and see how much you're spending on each uh, repair code. And you can al alter these repair codes as well, change them. So I'll do a save and close there and you can see that was added. And then you have parts and materials. This is where you can add parts to the uh, work order and get your total for parts. This will be deducted from inventory if you choose to with this little checkbox here. And just move on from there. And then we attachments. You're able to attach, like I said before, attachments. And then you can print out the work order down below. And it'll ask you if it's completed. You can see the, a work order is completed when you you have a completed date on it and if I'm going to say no to the invoice, well, I'm going to say yes here in this case and it puts the word invoice up at the top otherwise it would uh, have the word if I click again and say no, and it says work order completed at the top instead of invoice. And over here you can put your miscellaneous uh, charges and the uh, labor and parts items always get pulled from whatever you've entered into these tabs. You can't overwrite it here with something else. The miscellaneous you can enter in, a, in an amount there if you want to. And if you have a discount for some reason you can enter that. There's detailed videos that goes over work orders as well. Uh, you're also able to uh, create templates so that you can automatically enter in all the information from from a, from, an old, from a previous work order into a new work order so that you don't have to do a lot of extra data entry. That saves some of that time. And there's an, also a separate video that goes over that in detail. And uh, so tires and wheels. Uh, tires and wheels basically is, is just informational to keep track of what, entire, what tire was installed where and when at what odometer reading. So uh, this will show up and you can print a report on that. And we're going to go over to inspections and permits. This is to keep track of, this is just a... Um, a day-based intervals here 365 90 so you can enter in whatever if you want to change these intervals you can you just enter in the last date it was done and then it's going to automatically generate based upon this interval the next day it's due and then it's going to show up in the reminder screen and then filters this will uh, allow you to uh, enter in for quick reference your filters for that piece of equipment attachments this is so you can attach uh, external documents to the equipment itself, you know, uh, any kind of pictures or invoices or purchase orders or anything you want to, you can you can uh, scan them or attach any kind of external document here and then you can open it from whatever program Windows is set up to open that particular file type. There's a video that goes over that in detail as well. Notes, you can have uh, multiple unlimited notes here if you just start typing in notes. Uh, you can, it'll put in the current date you can put about 250 characters into each note field and so you can just add as many notes as you want. I think that's it uh, for the tabs various tabs. So let's go over the various forms. So we're going to go up here to forms and then we're going to look at customers and basically that's just where you can enter in customers and then you can assign down here on the bottom left the customer that owns that piece of equipment. So that's what customers is for. You could also use this internally um, if you want to, because we do have some reports that are based, that you can be customer based so that you can have criteria based upon a specific customer as well. So a customer doesn't necessarily have to be an outside customer. It could be an inside department as a customer or a location or something like that. And then we've got the drop down list maintenance. As I mentioned before, you can see I'll just give you an example of one here. We'll look at uh, fuel vendors. So if we scroll down, we can see here the fuel vendors. And so you can just basically you click on an item, you make a change, and then you close it. And the change is propagated throughout uh, wherever that particular, well, in, in that particular drop down for fuel vendors, that'll be on the fuel log. All right. So now we're going to go over to uh, parts inventory and the parts inventory screen uh, where you can basically add your parts to uh, the system. These parts are what's used in when you're creating a work order. The parts from here are pulled out of here and put into a work order. You can have, you can choose to tra track the inventory on this part if you want it to show up on the reminder screen when it gets down to a certain uh, minimum quantity on hand before reorder as you can see down here you can enter that amount you can enter in the quantity of that is currently on reorder and the date it was reordered if it's already hit that lower threshold um, down here it shows you all the places this part has been 
installed, when, which, which uh, work order was, the uh, date it was installed, the quantity, and the cost at the time of the installation. So that's it for parts. It also has a search feature at the top where you can search by various fields and sort by various fields. You can also choose to display either active, inactive, or all you can show all the ones that need a, a reorder currently. All right, so we're going to go down to uh, personnel, and personnel file allows you to enter in drivers, fleet technician, other, and you can put in their current driver's license number, and you can put in the the uh, commercial driver's license renewal date. And that'll show up in the reminder screen and also the last physical and next physical. And uh, if it's coming up due, that's going to show in the reminder screen as well. So if it's a driver, you can click on as a driver if you want it to show up and be allowed to add it to the uh, driver history over here. And for fleet technician, you can have them both as a driver and a fleet technician. You can check both those boxes if you want to. And uh, as a fleet technician, that means it'll show up in the drop down for adding labor to a work order. All right, so let's go to uh, the hazardous waste inspection log. Uh, this has basic instructions on uh, how to use this form and basically you're just going to put in the date, the employee, and any comments and uh, that's all you have to have to do on that. Close that and then we're going to go down to the reminders pop up. So we're going to click on that, let that run. Okay, so each of these tabs relates to a different part of the program uh, and you can see that each tab has a uh, a, a number next to it showing how to re how many reminders are currently inside of that tab. All right, so we can see each of those, and you can, uh, for example, on the uh, loop service reminders, we can see here the uh, miles to go. You can sort sort by these buttons here. So you can see here this one is actually 12,000 miles uh, past due. Um, if I wanted to do it by uh, hours to go or days to go, I could sort by those, but there's nothing due on those particular intervals, and um, and then once you've sorted, you can click on this print button right here, and it'll print out the uh, the list of equipment in the order that you've chosen. For example, like this. So we can see here we've got the miles to go at the top, uh, the most miles to go. So the, your most critical ones will be at the top in that particular sort that I just did, and then you can print that out. And um, if you go over here to the inspection reminders, we can see that... You can print the inspection reminders like you could on the loop service reminders. All of these tabs have a print button inside of it. Um, but you also have print inspection forms from this list. So what this will do is it will go through and it will print an inspection form for the upcoming inspection for each of these uh, pieces of equipment. So it will print out a complete list and basically it will just iterate through each piece of equipment and print out an inspection list straight to your default printer. Up here you can you have this edit how soon to be notified. If I click on that, it actually you're able to choose your odometer, how far in advance you want to be notified before something's due. So if you have something, uh, in this case, if some, this is going to start showing up a thousand miles before it's actually due or a thousand kilometers and uh, in this situation uh, down on the hours notification it's going to show up 10 hours before it's due and this will show 10 days before it's due so if we had something that was a 90 day inspection for example at day 80 this is going to start sh this that particular uh, item would start showing up on the on the, um, on the reminder screen all right so hopefully that makes sense to you and um, it, these filters allow you to filter sort of like the search over here so we could filter by specific um, items, customer, location, department or area or equipment type. And then once you've chosen that, you can choose the uh, whatever whatever is available to you as far as what you've entered into the program. And then click apply filter. It'll rerun the uh, reminders. And then it's only going to show you based upon the filter that you used. All right, show you the information. The uh, print all reminders up here at the right, this will print out these, it'll do the same thing as these, each individual print button that you see on each tab, but it'll just go and iterate through all of the tabs and print them all out one after the other. Um, re reminders pop up every eight hours. Here we have a choice from one to eight hours. So basically every eight hours, we're gonna get a little message that says, do you wanna check for reminders? And if, that po if at that point you do, you can say yes, and then it's gonna, pop this screen up. It's going to go through all the uh, queries and you know, it may take a minute or two and uh, pop this up. Um, otherwise, if you want to just keep doing what you were doing, you can say no and then um, not pop it up. All right, so that's that. And let's look at the work orders list. 
Uh, this is a list, uh, an entire list of all the work orders in the system, and you can sort by, uh, for example, complete by date, right? So if you wanted to see the things that are coming up due by a complete by date, you could do that. And oh, let's let's move this over, and we're going to change this filter here to the right uh, to only pending work orders. So we can see there's 28 records. In, in there and then we could sort by the complete by date and you can see here there's not some of these dates are missing that people haven't entered them in there but you can see here that uh, you, you could find your most critical ones by the earliest complete by date right and uh, also this allows you to go and edit work orders without having to go to each piece of equipment so if I double click on this I can actually open the work order and make changes um, also this from this screen you could uh, change the equipment number say if you entered the a work order and you needed to and you actually accidentally put the work order on the wrong piece of equipment you can go to the work orders list open that work order and then change the equipment to the proper equipment number by editing it right here you just change that number and then uh, it's going to ask you if you want to change it and then you're going to say yes all right, and so uh, you could search if you if I've if I've um, over here if I've clicked on equipment number, then I could search by equipment number. It's just going to bring up the first equipment number in the list. Let's go. Let's do 63 for example. Now it just goes to 63, and then I could scroll through and see other 63s. This is going to bring me to that to that point in the list. If I was sorting by work order ID, you could see here that the search becomes work order ID. And now if I wanted to look at a specific work order or find a specific work order number, like 20. 231 then it's going to go down and highlight that particular one for me all right and then if i want to recalculate the totals i can do that here uh, and this is the totals of what is currently being displayed on the program or, or on this uh, work orders list screen i should say Okay, so let's go to uh, the bulk odometer and hours entry. Uh, this allows you to enter in the uh, odometer and hours for each piece of equipment. You can just go down and enter each of these one at a time. And when you click on it, it shows you up here at the top the current odometer and hours reading for that piece of equipment. And then once you've entered it in all of the odometer readings that you want to, you, don't, you can skip them if you want to, or you can do one or two or all of them, however you want to do it. And then you just click save and close. It'll update every one of them that you've made a change to. You also have this threshold uh, here so that you don't accidentally add an odometer reading that's 5,000 miles more than the last highest odometer reading for that piece of equipment. And the same thing with the hours. There's a max there. You can change that here if you want to. If you think you need to put more in, you can. Or you can make the threshold lower if you are afraid that 5,000 is too high. Um, you can also export this to Excel. And then you can copy and paste data from an Excel into Excel, uh, into that Excel spreadsheet that's created. And then then you could import it back in and then you could do a save and close and that'd be a quick way to do your uh, bulk odometer and hour entries. All right, and so let's go over to tools, networking. And this is where you can network to a common database file. So basically you click on that and then you just click on this little open folder icon and you would navigate over to the file wherever it is. And I'm just gonna open that, that puts that back in there. You click link now and then close. I'm not gonna do that because then it'll restart the whole program and then back up the compact data click on that and basically this is where you would choose the location of where you want to back your data up to you just click the open folder icon and then choose the location and it defaults to the location of where your current data file is so if you wanted to change that you would just click on there and then change it to a different location for example let's just go to let's just go there here just create a test and click OK. And now we can see our new path right there. Now, if I wanted to back this up, I would just click on Start. So this has been successfully backed up. Click Close. Tatum's restarts. All right, so let's go back into the, um, where was I? Back into the backup and compact. Now we can see we have a history here and it shows us where the back, last backup was done. Uh, it'll actually, this list will just grow and grow and grow for each backup that you make. All right, so we'll close that. Okay, and now we will look at um, the update sort order. And this is where you, your actual equipment numbers over here on the left. And as I said before, these can be letters. Like you see here, you see fuel 24. And then you can assign it a numeric value. And then you can use the sort by equipment number up at the top and on some of the reports to sort it by this numeric value that you've entered here. All right, 
And then um, we're going to go to the Simplified Tatums. I, I went over that already. I went over the Edit tab names. So let's go to Preferences. And so in the Preferences, uh, we can choose Miscellaneous, Billing Terms, and then Work Order slash Invoices. So the Miscellaneous um, is to, we have these items here like Stop Asking, Update Occurring Odometer and Hours from other tabs so that you, so that it does not ask you. And then you can have it always update current odometer and hours from other tabs and if you click on that they both get checked and then it doesn't ask you but it always enters it from the other tabs and instead of prompting you and asking you. Um, display out of service equipment on reports if you click on that then your stuff that's marked as out of service will show up on the reports. You can have it stop asking to add lower interval loop services. Uh, what it, the system will uh, when you in, when you enter in a loop service that's say a, uh, a 3000 and then you have later on add a 10,000 um, interval, 10,000, oh, say it's a kilometer or mileage interval, then um, it's going to pop up a little screen and it's going to show you the other lower interval inter loop services that you can choose to show as being completed at the same time. So if you just select those and then click OK, then it will automatically enter those in there for you and give you a little note saying when it was entered. And like I said before, I think that the loop service has a full training video that goes over all that. Hide out of service equipment on the search list. So on this search list here, if you want to hide the out of service equipment, you can choose that box there and then hide out of service equipment on the work orders list, which I showed you a couple of minutes ago. Uh, this will uh, hide your out of service stuff on that work orders list. Uh, you can choose the paper size here if you want to. Uh, from letter to A4 or legal and uh, that should change it for you if that's the same as the default on your printer as well. You can have Tatum not ask you to back up when closing or you can have it always back up automatically when closing. Uh, one caveat there is when you are backing up, uh, you, you don't want, really want to use the backup feature if you are on a network and you're sharing a data file, the data file sitting on a server because other users could potentially be in it and it won't, the, ba the backup will fail in that case. It can't, it can't get full exclusive access to the database file on the back end if other other users are in it so um, you can you can use it if everybody is out um, otherwise you're going to get an error saying that they can't back up and then you can have it stop asking and then you just you won't don't even see it when you close Tatum nothing happens it'll just doesn't ask you or anything you don't get any kind of a prompt uh, billing terms we include inside Tatum's installation a file that is let's see it's over here under your program files x86 the Tatum 2005 folder and there is a sample billing terms and uh, Okay, so the sample billing terms looks like this here, and it's in a Word document, and so you'll need to have Word or uh, something similar like Google Docs or something to be able to open this. So basically, you can copy and paste this this information right down here in small text uh, into the billing terms there, and then that will show up at the bottom of your uh, work order. And you can alter this to fit your specific requirements as well. So that's just there as a little add-on. And then uh, for work orders and invoices tab of user preferences, we can hide the delete button to prevent accidental deletion if you check that box. You can have it always deduct work order parts of inventory. So the checkbox that you check to deduct the part from inventory uh, is not checked by default. If you choose this box here, then it would always be checked as soon as you added the part to the work order. It's gonna check that box automatically and deduct it from inventory. And then always update parts quantity on hand date. So in the parts, uh, inventory screen there's a quantity on hand a date that the quantity on hand was verified and you can have it so that every time you deduct parts from inventory via a work order it will update that particular date that, the ver that it was verified. The always display inactive parts when adding parts to the work order so in the drop down list of your parts uh, in a work order uh, you can choose to uh, have the inactive parts display if you want to. Uh, they don't by default. And then there's two choices as far as adding labor to a work order either employee or vendor and you can choose to have what you want as the default and if you need to make a change while you're in the work order you would just select the other option. Uh, work order printout format we've got a few formats here that we've created uh, to have your uh, work orders print out a little differently uh, there's just the default format and then we've got ones that include equipment number department or area for each part or labor item we have this one that print, uh, prints out labor and parts lines over two pages uh, when it's blank otherwise it's the same as the default 
result. So if you want to print out a, a work order that has not had anything done yet, you just want to hand off to a mechanic or technician, you can print it out. It'll print out blank lines over two pages, one page for parts, another page for labor, and then your uh, technician can fill that information in, then it can be brought back in once it's completed, and then the data entry can be done. Once the data entry is actually done, those extra lines and pages disappear, and it just gets just the actual data is, uh, is brought in so that the uh, printout shrinks down. And then for work order, uh, the work order format, this format hides labor units and cost per labor unit. So those are the ones that we have available now. And uh, as we get more requests, we'll create more variations of uh, available work order printout formats. And then uh, stop asking to print completed work order as an invoice. So that little pop-up message you saw there when I clicked the print button, uh, you can have it stop there and then always print it as an invoice. You can have it always print that way. Check this checkbox, always display parts notes on a work order printout and you can choose to uh, not display the parts notes. So the parts notes fields takes up a little extra space and you might not want to use that space. So you can hide, you can choose to not print that out. And then you can hide the warranty checkbox. You can also hide the recall checkbox. Uh, we're gonna look at the various reports. Okay, so let's go to uh, all equipment reports first. And basically we have an equipment summary, which is just sort of a, a list uh, showing some basic information about the equipment. We have the, the uh, all equipment last and next maintenance. So if I click on that, we'll show you that. And that shows us that information. And then we have the all equipment due next 30 days. Now this may not be, this will just show you only things that are based upon days intervals, not on mileage or odometer or hours meter intervals. Um, so that'll show you that. Needed maintenance and repairs, this is, this is, uh, will show you everything that's needed based upon this tab here. All equipment filters, this will show you all of the filters for each piece of equipment. So it just gives you the filter lists. Uh, basically an all equipment list, this is more like a spreadsheet type format. And then you have the all equipment and current driver list. This shows us the equipment number and who the driver is that's on it currently. All right, so over here on the right. And then we have the, oh, by the way, on each of these, we have a preview and a print. So you can, most of them you can preview and then print. Otherwise you can always just preview or you can just choose to preview or you can choose to print it out. This will, this will send it straight to your default printer. And then you have your uh, insurance equipment list that shows you for a specific insurance company which uh, piece of equipment is uh, insured by that particular insurer so that you can send that list to the insurance company. Okay, so let's go to the uh, cost per mile per hour report. And so we're going to choose a date range here. I'm going to go back. It's a little bit older database to January 2013. And we're going to just take this through February 2013. And there, there. Okay. And so basically with this report, you can pick and choose different pieces of equipment that you want included or you can choose your whole list if you want to, or you can choose to filter it by specific equipment types. All right, so I'm going to choose just a specific equipment number here, and we sort this. You can, you can sort it by these columns here, and then it will sort that way on the report, or you can use this sorting up here, it will sort that way in the report. So let's go down to 38. I'm going to choose fuel log and work orders cost to be included in this report. Uh, you don't want to have a duplicate of, say, work orders and parts for this equipment um, unless you know they're totally separate because uh, work orders already has parts included in it typically and parts for this equipment might be something you added just to kind of keep track of commonly used parts. So I'm going to click on those two. We'll click on preview report. Okay. And so we can see here that we have our uh, beginning and ending odometer readings for that date range. It tells us the earliest odometer reading and the date it was captured, the highest odometer reading and the date it was captured, and then we can see our total miles or kilometers traveled. And then we down here we have our work order labor, our work order parts, total work order costs, total fuel costs, grand total costs over here, and then our cost per mile or kilometer uh, over here. 
and then if you if I had chosen multiple equipment it would it shows us our grand total down here overall for the entire selection that was made for that entire date range so you could see your cost per mile kilometer uh, for the entire fleet or just for a specific subsection of your fleet all right so I'm going to close that close that and we'll go up to reports and uh, there's the miles traveled hours run report which is similar to this one um, but basically you don't have anything to, as far as cost it's just going to show you your hours or miles or kilometers run over a date range for your fleet or your specific equipment and then we've got the repair code cost per mile hour kilometer report and here we can choose specific repair codes that we want included in the report and then it's going to give us those totals our cost per mile and a total for each of those repair codes uh, that are selected for each piece of equipment for that particular date range. All right, and then we we'll go up to here. We we'll look at unit information, all equipment. So here you can select which equipment you want included, and it's going to give you each unit information report. Um, I'll just see if I've got any here. I'm just going to choose one and click preview. You can see what that looks like. It's basically got your your unit information, you know, make, model, year, serial number, VIN number, uh, license plate number, tires, the weights, other what's it equipped with, and so forth. So that's that. And then we have the next one here is the unit information with all equipment data. And that is similar to the one we just looked at, except for it's also going to print out for a specific date range. It's going to print out all of the information. Let's just choose one here. And let's go back there. We'll just choose this. So I'm gonna I'll just show you this. Basically, it's gonna show you all your loop services, all your all your inspections, all of your work orders, all your repairs completed, all your notes, um, pretty much everything about that piece of equipment that's been stored in the database. You can print it out and put it into a folder or say you're selling the equipment to somebody, then you can print out all the stuff that's been done with that equipment. And you can say you see the loop services, see the parts work orders just scroll through this this one here just for this one piece of equipment it's 35 pages all right and then it even gives you your cost per mile and uh, overall miles traveled since or for that specific date range all right so uh, let's see what else we got here we have the driver history all equipment by driver and then the driver history all equipment by equipment so if I look on that we're just going to show us a list of which driver was on each piece of equipment and then the other one is driver history, all equipment by driver. And this shows us each driver and the equipment he was on. All right, so that is that report, or those reports. And then we have our current equipment reports. There's the equipment maintenance and safety report. This is for your 90-day or 365-day inspections. By, you can, this is the only report that you can either print or preview. You can't preview it and then print it. So if I click on preview, I have to choose a, a, a year that we're going to display. So I'm going to just choose 2015. And this shows us all of the inspection items and then each month of the year for an entire year. It would have our mileage, our odometer readings, and our hours meter readings up at the top. And the next page is finishes off any inspection items. And then down here, it's gonna show us who the inspector was and, uh, and the date it was done, all right? And obviously the last time it was done and the next time it's due. Okay, so, and then current equipment reports, we're gonna look at the loop service report. And I'm gonna go back a little farther on this one. Okay, so this shows us the upcoming loop services uh, and the uh, list of all the loop services that were done for that year. And then we'll close that and go back to reports. Current equipment, remember this is the currently selected piece of equipment, so we're looking at equipment number 26 right now back here. Then we can see the repairs report. If there were any repairs, it would show us. If not, it's going to just tell us no records found. So you can see the, the repairs report there. And now that's the repairs completed. It has nothing to do with the work orders. That's just repairs completed. And then you've got your notes report that shows you all the notes on that equipment. If there are any, it'll, and there were parts report that shows you anything from the parts for this equipment screen. You can see them listed there. And then we can see unit information report, which is that same report. Uh, you could do your whole fleet or just one at a time here. 
there and then the uh, page two of this report actually would show you a picture if you attach a picture to to the database over here where it says equipment picture then you could have a picture of the equipment it would show up on that unit information report and let's go over to uh, the unit information report with all equipment data it's the same as the one for the all equipment reports where you could choose the entire fleet if you want to but this is just going to print it out for this specific piece of equipment and then the driver's history report for this specific piece of equipment shows you all the drivers that have been on it in the past there's nothing been on this piece of equipment so there's nothing to print there okay so now we're going to go to uh, reports more reports and we're going to start off with the report type equipment so this shows you the uh, if the if the equipment requires a periodic 90-day inspection and this will be the same report except for it's going to group it by customer uh, inspections and permits for a particular month that are due it's going to show you that uh, I'm not going to go through all these uh, there's a lot of reports here. So then we're going to go down to the fuel log. you got various fuel log reports and basically you can choose your date ranges um, and your loop service report. And then we have hints down below on some of these that show you other information about what kind of criteria you can choose. On this loop service report here, this is actually the reminders for loop services and it actually has the filters listed. So let me preview that one for you. So we can see here all these are due, currently due, to have a loop service done. And uh, so it tells you the loop service type and then it also it groups it. each piece of equipment it shows you the list of filters for each each piece of equipment uh, just for quick reference so let's go down to work orders work orders has a lot of different various reports uh, these are just the pending work orders then we have completed work orders typically every report in here is going to be a completed work order except for those ones at the very top. So everything else would be completed. So we've got things like uh, you can check your repair code totals by repair code. You can see your labor totals by employee number, your label totals by each equipment number. You could see your uh, all your work orders listed by work order number. This one here uh, shows you every work order basically and you can also choose your date ranges. Uh, gives you your total or your parts totals by equipment number, your parts totals by customer, grouped by customer and by equipment number. Uh, this one here is going to show you your total costs by equipment number. So if I click on that, you can see we just have an equipment number, the number of work orders done, and then the total costs. All right, and then you can choose a date range there from and to. Uh, total cost by repair code, uh, total cost by service by vendor. So if you have an outside vendor that's doing work, you can see how much you've spent with them. Uh, your total, your sales tax totals by each equipment and all work orders that don't have the default sales tax charged. So that you can verify those. And then um, we'll go back up a little bit. This one here, uh, parts, labor, material, or miscellaneous discounts and taxes combined. And then we have the parts and labor combined. These ones are similar. Uh, this one just shows more detailed information. Uh, if I click on that one, and let's just do a date range here of uh, 01, 01 to 01, 3 to 01, 01, 3 and we'll just click on preview so you can see what that report looks like there shows you what was you know, the, basically the description and the parts and then if there was labor it would show you that as well but there is no labor uh, this one has some labor it shows you who did it and the cost all right and then grand total for the report is going to be at the very end and so there's that and so those are uh, basically that's a quick rundown of uh, work order reports and then you have your parts inventory there's just a single report there and so you can choose to look at specific criteria on the report and then when you go to preview the report you can choose to exclude certain types of parts from the report this particular database has a lot of uh, part types and so probably have more than they need but anyways they've got a lot of part types so you could exclude specific types if you wanted to like for example if you didn't care about seeing tires uh, you might remove that from the list and then basically your inventory would it, it would be excluded from the report all right so I'm gonna click on that and then just gives us our parts quantity any quantity on reorder uh, shows you your quantity on hand and um, the cost of the quantity on hand all right so if we go to the end of this we could see the total cost for the entire inventory of what's available on hand and so that's that report and then we're going to go down to uh, parts installed this would be from that parts for this equipment this isn't necessarily from work orders 
but it'd be on that parts for this equipment uh, tab. Inspections for your 90 day or 365 day inspections. This will show you the past due and are uh, due and past due. You just put a date up in the future if you want to and see what's coming up due. So those are those reports. And then we have need of maintenance and repairs. That's from the need of maintenance and repairs tab. This is going to show you, how you can see everything that's currently open or anything that has specific complete by dates in a date range if you want to. Then the repairs completed. This is from the repairs completed tab, uh, not from work orders. And so you can choose one of these reports and then put in uh, the criteria, date criteria, or you can choose to add a description criteria if you want to. If you were looking for a specific item, you could search for it that way and then bring them up uh, in that report. So uh, that is all for reports and that's it for this demo. I right, hopefully that's been helpful for you and thanks a lot for watching. Have a good one. Take care.